So we're dealing with some pretty profound uh, pattern today, and I wanted just to give a few tips or demonstrate how to seam a pattern carpet. First off, whenever you make your run, your row run, you want to rub it. See which way it's laying down. You always want to run your rows. The direction it's laying down is just easier to run a row that direction. Um, if you look right here on the edge, any pa any pattern carpet that has this salvage on it will have, if you can see here, like this much of it, don't really belong on the carpet. It's just there to protect the edge of it. So the way they make carpet, if you'll run your row right there where this stops and the actual carpet starts, you'll be able to cut your other piece in the same spot and it should match up perfect. That's the way they they design pattern carpets for you for you to match them up real easy. So we're going to fold it out just a little piece and get this flat so I can start running my row from here. Once again, I'm going to use the blade on this side of my row runner since we're cutting off this side. And I'm not going to use an ink pen, uh, carpet all, row runner, or anything like that. We're going to use this which is for Berbers and uh, commercial carpets, nice and smooth so it don't snag on anything. And it's long, so it stays in the rows real good. It's real easy to run a row with this. If you'll just kind of work it back and forth like that, it'll run right down in the row by itself. Now if you try to push it all up like that, you're probably going to get off. So just work it back and forth there and it'll, it'll go real good for you. right here. We can see it going. Okay, we got that one done. We're gonna fold this over out of the way, get our other piece of carpet rolled out and ready to go, and then we'll be right back. Okay, so this is our other fill piece. We're gonna have to make a T-seam in this, which is a head seam, a T-seam, where we'll cut across and put two pieces together. So we'll explain that as we're doing it too. Once again, we're gonna go with this salvage edge right here and just cut the salvage edge off of this other piece. And we'll see if it matches up like we talked about just a while ago.
time I'm using this piece, so I'm going to use the blade that's on this side of my row cutter. Okay, so we got one more field piece to cut to finish up our seam here. So we're going to get this and pull it back out of the way. Go ahead and get that other one cut. We don't need to wash that again, and we'll be back. Okay, so we got all of our field pieces cut now. We want to make sure that they're going to line up. We're going to check it out before we go any further and make sure everything's going to line up good. Okay, so I know that we have a 36 inch side match. So from here to here is going to be 36 inches. So that's going to help me get this like I want it because I want to go from that one over here. So 36 inches, there should be that same pattern, which is exactly right there. So if we're not too far off, we should be easy to match it up real good. that done it right there so if you want to come up and look this way you can see the pattern better I think so it's a little, a little tight right there but we got our looks like by looking here here and here we could probably actually do just a little Something like that. Is that right? Okay. So that was it. So once again, we just trimmed off the salvage edges and they butted right together. The pattern matched up perfect. Everything went together just perfect. So. Now that we got that part done, I gotta get my other piece up there, uh, get it matched up, prepare my head seam, then we'll put that together. And okay, so we got our other fill piece cut, ready to go. All we gotta do. So now I determine which way, which end I want to put that small piece, and uh, I'm naturally going to be stretching. See up the hallway there. Okay, so I'm going to be stretching that direction away from the hallway. So I want to put my small piece up here. That way I'm not going to be stretching right on top of it. Rather than down there where my stretcher head would be right by it. So I want to put my small field piece up here on this end. And I got this matched up just like I did. So now I want to uh, get this cut. So to straight edge this, this is laying down this way. That one's the same way because it's my other fill piece. And um, I want to cut this one first, bends it is laying that way. Because if I overlap two pieces like this and I straight edge this one first, if I was going the other way and I straight edged this one first, but when I cut through and make my marks to make my other cut, since this nap is laying this direction, I would actually be cutting 
the nap a little bit and there would be little dimples in the carpet there. So I always want to cut the piece that's laying forward first. That way whenever I overlap it and cut my second piece, the nap's laying that way. So I'm not going to cut any nap that I'm going to be using. Bins, we got that straight edge or a uh, row run. Should be good to put my framing square on it to get us a nice straight cut here. Put my framing square here and just butt my uh, a six footer straight edge up to that, like so. Should give us a nice clean edge here to run off of. You want to fray as little as possible. You don't want to cut too deep, or you're going to, like I explained a while ago with the nap, see how it sticks out here? If you cut too deep, you're going to cut this nap and you're going to have to recut your seam because it's not going to go good. So you only want to cut through the backing on this. straight edge has lines on the other side so when I got it there I can slide it down and it's going to go straight because those lines are going to hold it straight see these grooves here will cause my straight edge to slide straight whenever I pull it to me like that now once it's cut you don't want to just drag it and pull it you want to look come right up here you want to pull easy and anything that didn't get cut all the way through, you can see I still got fibers here. So take the back side of your knife because it's going to be sharp. And just cut those off. You don't want to pull that. You'll pull the strands out and you'll be in trouble. Okay, so Benz, we got this. If you look right here, see we got all full fibers. We don't have any cut fibers or anything like that. That's what you want. If these fibers were cut in half there where I pushed my knife too hard, we'd have to recut it because the seam would stand out like a sore thumb. So we want to make sure we don't cut the fibers whenever we're cutting through. That's why I didn't push too hard right here. And I had to come back and cut those fibers there with my knife. Okay, so that we got this folded over now out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and line my other piece up. This piece is good. So let's see here. We found the pattern again. Okay, so that was simple enough. We just pulled it over and it happened to fall right in position, not where it needs to be. Okay, so once again, 
as you've seen in my, one of my other videos, um, on the barber, matching barber seams up, if you look diagonal, you'll be able to see really, really well if everything's matched up real good. Because you can just watch the pattern flow right through from one piece to the other. And that'll get a lot better view of it like that rather than straight down on top of it or looking like this. If you look at an angle, you can just see the pattern flow right through it. So now that we got that lined up, we're going to fold this over. This is good. This piece is good. This piece is already straight edged here. So we're going to flop it right over on that other piece that's already fixed and lined up. We're going to put some score marks here where we know right where the straight edge is at. Because this piece is matched up with this, this piece is matched up with this. So if we mark it here, right at the edge, bring down here, right there, we put just a little cut. Come on down here and mark just a little cut here. Okay, now when I put my straight edge on that and cut it, these two pieces should be perfect because these two pieces are perfect with the big piece. straight edge. So what I'm going to do is plug this over out of the way now and uh, line those two up, pull them off the wall so I can get my seam complete without getting up on the wall and stuff. Make it nice and flat and uh, we'll take a look at it in just a second. Make sure everything does flow together good. So these should flow right together perfectly. Everything is matched up. Just as it should be, you want to fill your edges, make sure they're good. That's the most important thing because you're going to be joining the other carpet here. But as you can see, everything flows right together nicely. All the way down through there, my pattern's lined up all nice. Okay, so as I explained in one of my other videos about head seams, always want to keep your seam and tape just an inch, inch and a half, something like that, from the edge. This is actually the thickness of you want to keep it. About half of the width of the tape is what you want to keep it from this edge. So when you join your other carpet here, you don't have tape all the way to the end and it's going to make it thicker and it's going to look like this is overlapped where it meets this other piece. So just keep your same tape in, maybe an inch, inch and a half, something like that. You'll be fine. Again, the seamer down now is going to allow me to have a nice, tight, flat seam. Fill the edge here, make sure they're good. Mesh it right together. After you roll it, you're probably going to fill it again because sometimes this will shift a little bit. Usually the seam piece will shift a little bit whenever you roll it. So you always want to make sure you check it after you roll it to make sure it's still matched.
what I'm doing now is I got my napping chairs. I'm just rubbing over it, make sure there's no loose fibers. If there's any uh, loose fibers, like so, like that right there, I'm just going to take my little napping chairs and snip them right off there. Okay, so now we got it pulled over, lined up and everything like that. Um, if you'll come close, right here is actually my head seam, right down there. So this is my small piece that I put on there, and this is the full piece that I put on there. And if you can look right here at my pattern, it just flows right across my seam. My seam is right here, see my seam. So the pattern just flows. There's no disruption from this small piece. Now let's come on down just a little bit. Same thing here on the other piece. It just flows right across the seam. See right there's the seam. It just flows, flows. Right here, way on down here on the other end, even, it just flows right across the seam. There's the seam. No disturbances from one piece to the next. It just flows, flows right together all the way down. So you can get good results. You can get good results if you uh, match it up. Cut each piece like we showed here. Looking at it standing from a distance, you can see everything just flows right on through there.